So he says, so the answer to his question about how this diversity of world creation comes into being is that it arises on account of mental modifications and it will cease when they cease. This is quite a difficult answer, I think, for for the modern Western mind to, to make sense of. We tend to see what Sukha referred to as world creation, as this external world of material physicality. And yet the answer given is uh, by the sage Janaka, and one which was widely known, it's not, it wasn't a great esoteric teaching. Uh, it arri the, the world arises on account of mental modifications. In other words, it's a, it's a mind created thing. Our, our experience of reality is based on notions of reality. Um, a lot can be said about this, and I, I've spoken about this before. Um, but let's just take a clear example. At this point in time, what exists? You're looking at me on a, a video, on a video screen probably, and uh, and you assume that the world, that there's a world outside. I say you, you assume um, because you don't actually know it's there. You're assuming it's there, it's an assumption. You would say, well, of course it's there, but that's not what's going on right now. For me here, the whole universe consists of a small room and its contents. Everything else is based on memory. It's based on assumptions, it's based on inductions. And, and memory, assumptions and inductions are all aspects of the mind. So any notion that there's a world outside this room that I'm in is, is simply that, it's a notion. Now you might have a reaction to this and say, yeah, well, but okay, you know. You're, uh, so you're, you're grudgingly acknowledging the logic but to actually experience this, to actually feel this, is another matter altogether. Um, but at least I suppose if there's some sort of logical understanding, that's the beginning. Uh, but it's worth contemplating and not dismissing, because it has a, a certain force, and uh, it's the force of that of that understanding which can take us take us on. It says here that when thus when his self knowledge had been confirmed, Sukha attained peace and remained in Nirvikalpa Samadhi. Uh, Samadhi is it's interesting that the translator didn't actually translate this because it's it's, it's quite a commonly known word. Anybody that's reading this kind of text will know what Samadhi is. It's got quite a lot of variations of, of meaning, um, different subtleties of meaning. It generally means absorption. It's usually related to meditation when you get absorbed in a, an object of your object of meditation, whether it's in the, bre the breath or in the image of a deity or just some more mundane object. It's when absorption arises. And um, Nirvikalpa samadhi, samadhi is when that absorption is in the, uh, it's, it's when the object of meditation is actually the, uh, the thing that is actually meditating. It's sometimes called consciousness. I would describe it as the attention because when you're in Samadhi, it's when the attention is absorbed in something. But in Nirvikalpa Samadhi is when the attention is absorbed in itself. 
and, and this is a state of pure being and uh, it means that the attention has no interest in being hijacked into anything else it's got no natural tendency to, to be absorbed in, in other people or other objects or other interests it is completely at rest or at least not being hijacked.